eagles. Uh, miner, the okay. dark bird. Uh, water, Mon water monitor. Ah, uh, crocodile. Parrots, yeah. Parrots. Okay. Parrots. I'll turn up the view. Uh, that monitor lizard. Okay, we yes. see it very frequently. Yeah. Well, boar, uh, monitor lizards. Okay. Uh, maybe some crocodiles. Golden retriever. Otters. Wild okay. boars. I mean, many years ago with Vegas, when we set up our wildlife rescue services, I mean, a lot of people were telling me, Singapore got wildlife, man. Why do you need to? <laughs> what, what are you rescuing? Uh, but actually, it's not too bad. People knew about the otters, the wild boar. Yeah. Uh, even named the miner. Mm. Well, good start. 100, 200. More than 500. It's actually 40,000. 40,000, oh, yeah. all right, it's okay. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, wow. 40, wow. Nice. wow, okay, okay. Yeah, amazing. Where are they though? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So I guess people didn't think that there's that, there is that many. I think again, that was one of the biggest issues. Because mm. if you don't know that they exist, then it's harder when we talk about protecting them. Here, I think it's often out of mind, out of sight. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, the, the awareness, that's why it's, it's extremely important. Oh, wow. it's, it's really bad. It's suffocating them and uh, stopping the uh, eco-growing uh, environment. Yeah, so destroying wild lives and uh, wild plants and uh, nat natures. Especially the microplastic, the, the small, smaller yes. one. Uh, yeah. Since it's, it's not biodegradable, yeah. yeah. So hope something's been done to help them yeah, to remove so. them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're killing them. They're basically killing the microplastics and stuff. Yeah. They just found out that microplastic ex exists in the first snowfall in the Arctic. So yeah, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. Like yeah. Maybe something they're losing their habitat, and mm. human need to try our best to protect them. It's more about the marine life. Like mm. I think they are affected more compared to mm. others. Like suffocating the turtles, um, trapping and trapping them somehow, uh, getting into their organs and stuff like that. Yeah. So in in Singapore, it's still like very controlled, but obviously yes, overall across the globe, it's not at all good. I mean, I don't know why we are like spoiling our own planet, right? Yes. I mean, maybe we should use uh, those kind of metals which can be like recycled, maybe more towards paper. Or can, maybe we can carry our own mug, right? I mean, we carry so many stuff, right? We can carry our own mug as well. Yeah. I use my bag, all that, instead of using plastic bag. To form. sort of reduce mm, the plastic correct, waste. Correct. Yeah, obviously, like, we try to bring our own like shopping bags mm -hmm. and, you know, do whatever we can to like eliminate plastic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's good, again, not just talk about how plastic, mm. but the microplastic, uh, which is entering our, our food chain. Yeah. And you really see that in our beach cleanups now. I shared a photo on my social media where you pick up the sand and you see it's like a whole kaleidoscope of colours. And that's a scary thing because the plastic has been there so long it's disintegrated into tiny little pieces and fragments. It's almost very hard to clean up now. Mm. I'm glad they talked about some solutions as well. Uh, that we, Really not about recycling but really about how we can reduce our use of plastic. I think it should be stopped because it's uh, cruelty to animal. Uh, they should find other ways to help uh, them do the testing. Yeah, I think all animals should be protected. Yeah. I think it's necessary for humankind. Mm -hmm. It's only spy a species that survived with Homo sapiens. Mm -hmm. We wipe out all other species <laughs> in the world. So if we want to stay survive, I don't think we have much choice. Oh, I think it's unfair. There are better ways. They are more human ways. Yeah, yeah. Probably they should find out better ways because first thing that I feel, obviously I don't know much about all these testing, but the thing is, I don't know whether if you test it on animal, then how can you declare it safe to be used on humans as well? Anyways, they shouldn't be testing on animals. I mean, they're so cute, innocent, right? I mean, they can't express it, what they are feeling, right? I think most products now are cruelty free, mm. like they don't mm. test on animals anymore. And I think like people are more conscious about this mm. type of thing. So like they tend to buy like products that mm. don't really mm. use animal testing mm. anymore. Mm. Do you happen to sort of actively look up for those kind of brands so that you avoid uh, them in your shopping? Uh, more so in my skincare. In skincare yeah, okay. not, not uh, like cruelty free. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, we know that they are doing animal testing, we will try not to buy from them. Mm -hmm. Do you sort of actively look up for brands that don't do animal testing? Yes, I do. Brands? Yes, we actually do. We're also that actively choose non-animal testing products. 
Unfortunately, uh, we don't really have choice, mm -hmm. like cosmetics. Yeah. Uh, so I, I still have to buy them, mm -hmm. but I hope someday they will uh, find an alternative. I do not aware of it, so we just buy. But we don't buy like mm -hmm. animal skin and yeah. anything like that. Yeah. We try to avoid something them. that obvious. Yeah. One brand which I uh, go for is the Body Shop, right? They don't. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. They don't endorse this animal testing, yeah. so I, I try to look out for these things if, if it's mentioned or not. Do I? Not really. I buy a lot from the internet, so ah, we don't really. Yeah, yeah we don't okay. really check if they're animal tested or not. We just look for a good deal. I also not very sure, but <laughs> but as I know, it's cosmetic, right? Yeah. And also those health vitamin or yeah. that. I think I think mostly we use yeah. to the monkey like to test whether it's uh, fine for yeah. humans. Yeah. A lot of it's rabbits actually. We don't talk much about animal testing in Singapore, but I'm glad not many people know about it. With animal testing, it really is the consumers that need to speak up. People have the spending power you know, to choose brands that don't test on animals. Um, and the brands really rely on the consumer support. I think it's also rather optimistic that you can see people taking more ownership. Stereotypically, uh, we tend to be more looking towards, you know, someone else to guide us, someone exactly. else to have yep. like affirmative action, like legislation. Mm. And so I mean, next stage of activism really be more people speaking up. So we change uh, our own behaviours and our own mindset and now it's really about advocating and getting more people aware about it and changing their lifestyle as well. We did some campaigns was it, about animal testing, looking into the companies that uh, test or don't test. But again, we found that overall, I mean, it's, it's going in the right direction. Mm, okay. A lot of companies are already not testing. Uh, plus, a lot of countries have said, even if you test outside, you will not be allowed to sell in our country. Oh. Yeah. Mm. And companies have responded. They know that, that well, again, consumer is demanding that uh, products not be tested and I, I think as a lot of them has rightly said you know yeah. there are many different alternatives now mm. uh, you really don't need to test the animals and with the current technology that really has to be a thing of the past really. mm. um, I'll say semi-true yeah I'll, I'll go with true I think it's false uh, we have some animal society right, right. yeah right. so I then see. I think animals are well taken care of. I would say uh, not completely true, not but not true. completely false. Because there is there's some measurements that are taking care of some of the wild animals. See like the crossings for, for some of the wild animals. We see Acres has a really good job, like especially picking up the animals that people think as right. pests. Right, right. And that they're part of the environment, like the uh, pythons. There are efforts to try and like conserve, you know, I'm, I'm sure like there are. It's just that maybe we don't know. It's, it's, it's a work in progress always lah. Uh, it's not well protected. There's few organizations are protecting them. Mm. But uh, climate change wise, we are too small mm. to right. protect the wildlife. Right. We, we really do contribute a very small amount of emissions compared to the rest of the world. But I think we have perhaps a, a, a big role to play, especially in this region. Uh, with climate change, I mean, we're the first to have a carbon tax. Hopefully, other countries will start to follow. And I say the Singapore brand is strong. And, I, and mm -hmm. I think that we can, well, perhaps play a leading role in these efforts. With wildlife, I mean, we're, we're, I think there's a lot more progress now. Um, even I mean, when we have to develop an area, it really is a last resort. And, you know, we do all the EIA now and, and try to mitigate as far as we can. <laughs> but I always say, can we do more? Then obviously, yes. Like, yeah. I hope we do. Uh, there's a new wildlife act as well that increases protection for uh, wildlife outside nature parks and, and reserves so more and more people are aware of this issue la. so again we're seeing all the responses i'm quite optimistic that not, not that change will happen but change has already happened here mm -hmm. i mean a lot more student-led initiatives as oh, well okay. uh, even coming to uh, Yishun to study the, the the bird population again seeing how they're how we can find ways to not cull them and more humane alternatives interviewing residents uh, you see a lot more ground-up initiative and i think mm -hmm. that's important as i said that that could be the next that should be the next phase of activism here yes. where a lot of people are aware they've changed their lifestyle they've done something to to well, change their own mindsets mm. and now it's really about how they can advocate for this change among the general population the community mm. well we've been vegetarians for most of our lives mostly for uh, welfare issues right. well I'm a veterinarian so for me it was pretty clear that I didn't want to eat any animal right. products right. and I think Fugons was Welfare as well, mostly. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, well, not I wanting to be part of the big correct. machine of is overproduction. The is the baby here vegetarian he, as well? He no, eats it's... everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, we give him the chance to try everything and then he'll, he'll make, make his, his own decision. decision. Yeah. I think I know about six, five or six mm. people who are vegans or vegetarians. Right. I think um, religious 
uh, religious matters is one of the factors. Right. The other is um, possibly uh, animal conservation. I know a friend who um, is quite environmentally uh, conscious right. and that's why she chose to be vegetarian. La. So right. I would think these two factors are the main factors. Right. I do know like sometimes uh, Buddhists become vegetarian for like mm. a day in like the right. month or something. Yeah. Right. Uh, out of 10 maybe 3 or 4 uh, right. within my family uh, it's more for religious purpose religious. maybe 1 or 2 they saw some videos in YouTube and right. they said okay they decided not to eat chicken I think most of the ones that I know is like maybe like 2 or 3 right. it more, they're more concerned is not so much like um, animal cruelty but more of like the uh, helping with climate change right. I have heard a lot of people who were vegetarian before but coming to Singapore they became flexitarians because mm. it's hard to find vegetarian products and it's like super expensive yes. as well Actually getting a lot easier. I turned vegetarian 23 years ago now. Oh. And it was a little bit harder then to find vegetarian food. But nowadays it's so easy. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many plant-based options. And, and I think as, as some rightly said, uh, that's the best way to tackle climate change. You know, mm. As compared to cutting emissions from transport. or Actually, you don't need to go on a full plant-based diet. But if everyone can at least cut down a bit. I mean, that's why there's the Meat Free Monday movement. And mm. that really is about how we can reduce our consumption. And that will help go a long way. Uh. And I think there's like stereotypes of uh, vegans and vegetarianism diet. But I do yep. think that's changing, especially in our generation. You see a lot of uh, social media activists really like breaking all these stereotypes. So I would say there's a generational divide. Yeah, I remember when I went, when I turned vegetarian, it was an overnight mm. thing. And my grandma was quite upset. Yeah. She <laughs> yeah, said, then cook what for you now? <laughs> all her favourite, my of my favourite dishes that she used mm. to cook, and she said, cannot cook, eh? Yeah. My dad, of course, was upset as well. I mean, he was yeah. out in the media and he was, wasn't happy that I went vegetarian. But yeah. again, it was more difficult then. So, you know, the family dinner of 10 on the table and we go out and eat, mm. it was, became quite difficult. But again, now it's so readily available. Mm. We try not to use uh, plastic straws right. and uh, plastic paper plates and all that. Mm. We right. try to buy disposable, which is biodegradable. Right, like the cornware. Cornware and, like, and all that. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have that misconception that Biodegradable is better for the earth. So that's true for countries that landfill their waste. Mm -hmm. In Singapore, we incinerate everything. Uh, so it costs a little bit more, I mean, the carbon-wise to, pr to produce and carbon and other resources uh, to produce biodegradable you know, cutlery oh. or plates. The, the best way really is to use reusable plates, reusable cutleries. Mm. Uh, that will help save the environment a lot more. Than okay. And again, that's something we are pushing now. At least mm. new hawker centres, they're not allowed to have disposables when you dine in. Oh. So that's another step forward where we're getting people to use reusable plates, having the, the central dishwashing available. There's some of my friends who uh, don't do disposable now. She like brought her own um, like cutleries and all those stuff like when trying to get. Right. Okay, I'm a flexitarian myself, right. so as much as possible, I avoid eating meats, especially right. pork and beef. Yeah, right. since right. they're like red meats and contribute a lot to greenhouse gas emissions. Right. Personally, if I were to like try and like you know do some exchanges, it's a bit hard because. Personally, I really enjoy meat. Right. So, yeah, uh, I think, you know, it, it's like you're giving a lot from your, in, on the individual level. So I feel like what should be done instead maybe is like uh, we try and like source out cheaper methods to produce, cheaper and also more efficient methods of producing like meat, for right. example, in the future. So it sounds crazy, but I'm a vegetarian that doesn't like vegetables. Oh, yeah. I hope my children don't watch this video. <laughs> <laughs> but I never liked it. I really like my meat. Mm. But again, they make a conscious decision to stop because it's better for the animals, better for the planet. Mm. And again, now with all that plant-based meat, which really does taste the same, why not? Even now, there's plant-based chicken rice. Oh yeah, I tried that. It's the really hawker centre in, in Amokyo. Mm. It, it really is good, so why not? Yeah. And if I mean, if I can do it, right, I, I really just love meat. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody can. For me, I try to do it in terms of lifestyle habits, um, off like you know all these electronic appliances when I'm not using mm. them, or try not to you know um, uh, use too many plastic bags if I if I can afford right. it. You no, know? or if I try to bring out a tote bag or one or two you know, right. when I go grocery shopping. So those are the main things that I do, like, Just small, minor lifestyle changes. Using their own right. uh, plastic bag right. and using their own reusable straws, things like this. Right. Yeah. Um, I guess the use of like metal straws and mm. like cup sleeves. Right. In Singapore, in Singapore, well, ride bicycles. We don't own a car. Right. We only use public transport and bicycles. And we try to recycle, although we're not really sure what happens with that. Right. But we keep on doing it. Right. <laughs> on That's hope. good. 
trying to reduce the amount yeah. of waste that we create. Especially like one time plastic and one stuff like that. Is, is not easy because at some point we try to go to the same hawker center where we yeah. get the vegetarian fruit and try to take the plastic containers mm. and they said so sorry we cannot put on yeah. your plastic containers right. because of LC of regulations right so it's government regulations that stop them from pu reusing our container I think container. for right. sanitary reasons right. yeah. we are we are compelled to get the plastic containers, containers every time. that we don't want <laughs> and then we do recycle those I see but ideally we we, we would reduce yeah, yeah reduce, reduce use. before re recycling yeah. right yeah. the awareness and activism has, has gone up significantly but I think there's a good amount of people in the middle which means they not that bothered about animal protection and I, I think it's important to reach out to them and again create that much needed awareness on this issue mm. but definitely the, the people that are supportive of the environment habitat protection um, animal welfare that, that portion is definitely growing mm. but you know you must couple that together with the pressures we're facing now of mm. urbanizing and there's a lot more human wildlife conflict and trying to get people to understand that you know of all that that 40,000 species uh, we likely will come into more and more close contact with them uh, so how we can coexist uh? don't stare at the monkey don't chase the <laughs> otter don't go and take photos so near the crocodile yeah. it's, it sounds like simple things <laughs> to say but people keep doing it and, and then the, and the animals react and do something and that's why mm. uh, we're trying to create more awareness on the human wildlife coexistence uh, what do you think of the overall responses were they expected or unexpected I think they're very progressive actually oh. <laughs> again I keep saying it gives me some optimism that mm. Uh, we're really heading in the right direction. People are aware of what the issues are and I think most importantly, as we, we said earlier, they've really changed their lifestyle. Mm. And they want to do more as well. So overall, uh, a huge plus and a positive sign that we're heading in the right direction. So why do you think it's important for the general public to be more informed about these complexities in animal welfare? With animals, they really are the most voiceless members of our society. Mm. Uh, they depend entirely on us to speak up for them. And I think morally, ethically, that's the right thing to do. Again, it's important that we learn to coexist. The climate is changing. That if we continue in this path of uh, well, we're heading towards more and more destruction, I think we'll ultimately pay the price. Are there any specific areas where you feel like there still needs to be more citizen involvement? Uh, probably in every area. So again, oh. you, have seen, <laughs> you probably have one side mm. of the, the picture here. There's of course yeah. the other side where it says, you know, we want our HDB flat faster, mm. which means we've got to build more. And we're land scarce in Singapore, so where do we build? We try our best to develop sites where there's no forest, there's, there's no greenery, and all, but ultimately there comes to a point where, again, like some of the forests you've seen uh, lately, we have to develop. And same with all the, the bird issues, right? Some mentioned about miners, they poop on the car, they make a lot of noise at night. Some people want them to be removed. And then there's another side that want to keep them. So I, I think the way forward now is trying to find the middle ground trying to find consensus and, and moving forward that we can address both sides of the concerns. That's easier said than done. Mm -hmm.